Today's DIY, we're gonna be painting the desk of many colors. This desk has a little bit of a story behind it. It's already been in the shop, it hasn't sold, so it's gonna get a new look and hopefully find a new home. So the reason I'm repainting this is because it's been in the shop. It was $95 and then I marked it down to $75. It's even been 20% off the $75 and still nobody wants it. I think the paint job is cute, but it's pretty design specific. And I painted it a long time ago when it was made for my daughter's room. And it's actually been, this is its third paint job. So the paint job today is paint job number four. So initially when I bought this desk, I paid $20 for it and it had a huge crack. It actually ran all the way through to here and it was spread pretty wide. My dad and I repaired that over 20 years ago and the crack has come back a little bit, but structurally it stayed sound. So originally this desk was white and then when Odelia was a baby, I made it into a changing table and we painted it pink. And then she grew up and we painted it gray. It's actually painted in um, Fairy Chalk Mother Industrial with Jamint stripes. And then we just recently redid her room, which we have videos on that. I can have Zeb drop the link below. I put the desk in the shop. It had a matching dresser and that actually sold right away. But for whatever reason, even though this is finished the same as that dresser, this desk has not sold. So it's going back to its roots and I'm painting it white, which was the first color I ever painted it. And I remember my dad being upset because it was natural wood and he wanted to keep the stain. And even all those years ago, I enjoyed white paint. So I painted it white, even though he wasn't happy about it. I was a teenager, so I wasn't gonna listen to him anyways. <laughs> This is my go-to brush. It's the one and three quarters Pink Pixie. It holds a ton of paint. You can get it down into the cracks and you can also take it and pull it along for a nice even finish. This finish will have brush strokes no matter what I do because it has been painted and brushed so many different times that it is what it is. We're gonna make the brush strokes work for us, especially when we do the top. We're gonna need the texture. This dresser isn't just gonna be white. We're gonna be using two different stamp we're gonna be using three different stamps to do the top, the drawers, and the knobs. All right, we're out here in the garage. I'm getting ready to sand it. We're going to distress it just a little bit and smooth some of the brush strokes out. We're not gonna get all of them out because there's some from previous paint jobs. So we're distressing now before we stamp it so that once it's stamped, we don't have to do a lot of heavy distressing and move the details from the stamp. So what I'm doing is just doing a quick pass over all the flat surfaces. I don't want a really, really heavy distress, just kind of lightly around the edges. Because what's gonna happen as I distress this, because it's been painted so many times, I'm gonna start to get some grays, some pinks, some mint colors. We're using the Barnwood stamp from IOD. Zeb's back there, he's got the brayer and he's got the stamp. We take all the pieces in this and we cut it apart so we can use them independently and we don't actually take them off the mounting back. We're using black velvet. It's like a soft black, almost like a really dark gray. For this next line, I'm going to use a different stamp. I like this one because it has lines on the top and the bottom. So Zeb's putting on the very last row. The thing with the Barnwood stamp is don't overthink it. Just line it up as neat as possible. Make sure to slightly overlap your stamp so that way it's one continuous pattern. But what really helps make it look like Barnwood are all the little pieces and details that we're going to add next. 
After I get this fourth row on here that we're doing and get it lined up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the kerf mark pattern and go back over here. So I'm just going lightly on this one. I don't wanna get it too busy and too muddled. This is what we've got so far. We haven't layered on any extra detail or knots or anything like that. This is just the big plank stamps. So this is the kerf stamp. Jamie's just going back on here so that it has those saw marks kind of like this one here. Well, also this line that's on here, so it looks like a plank. All right, so now I'm gonna add all the random details. And these details, I'm gonna go ahead and go over where I edged the stamp together to try to cover up some of the lines, the obvious lines from where the stamp ended. And there's lots of little detail pieces that you can add to give some extra texture to your stamp. So I'm putting the knot right here. We had kind of a light spot. We're gonna add another little knot right there. This is a kerf mark pattern and I'm just gonna add it over here to kind of break up another line that we have. If you don't know what kerf marks are, they're basically like what the sawmill would leave before it's planed down and sanded smooth. So now I'm adding in the nail holes and ends of the planks so it looks like individual planks. And you do not want these to be even, you want them to stagger them. So this first one is coming in right here. This is where it really makes it look like barnwood. So this part here is the lip of what would be the planked top of this desk. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that also look like wood. And I'm just using this skinny wood grain stamp. All right, so I've gotta carry the plank line over from the top. I'm just gonna line it up. All right, so on the edges, your grain would be running long ways instead of sideways. So just gonna take and add a few marks just randomly here with the stamp. And then we gotta put our lines back in so that we have our individual planks. When you get a stamp out for the first time and you haven't used it before, you want to season it. Basically just taking a 220 sanding sponge or sandpaper would work. And I'm just going to lightly scuff over the top of all of these. That way I know that they're done. And what this does is it gives the rubber a little bit of tooth to hold your paint or your medium, your ink, whatever you're using. I'm going to add a little detail with these back plate stamps right here on these drawers. So Zeb's using the grain sack stripe knob topper because we didn't want it to be too crazy and we wanted something nice and clean to give a contrast to the detailed back plate. That's what that's going to look like. Time to seal it with some Sweet Pickens top coat and this transformation's done.
So I feel like, you know, they say third time's a charm. This is fourth time's a charm because it was white, pink, gray with mint stripes, and now it's white again. So it was a lot of fun getting the planks on here. It's actually pretty easy doing a surface this large, just laying it out and then kind of, we let Jamie do the random because, you know, I tried to give her direction and she's like, no, just let me do it. Because I was like, no, you need to put this one just right here. So it's better. It turned out looking great. So it's better if you just leave it alone and just randomly do it. The most important thing to make sure is that you don't see like a stop and a start to each plank. So you kind of want to do some overlapping. You want to stagger your little marks with a nail hole. So that way it really looks authentic. And it doesn't hurt if you've got some texture and brush strokes to your paint, which this does because it's been painted so many times with a brush that you can definitely see that texture and it makes it look like wood grain. So it's to our advantage. I'm also super in love with the back plates. It really adds a little bit of extra detail to what would have been some very boring drawers. And for sure, the knob toppers and the flexi stamper saved the day with some really cute knobs. We went with the grain sack because it was a little bit more farmhouse and we wanted to tie into the plank top. Yeah, a lot of the knob toppers are pretty ornate and fancy. And this, obviously, we went for like a plank top look and the grain sack worked great. So here's a list of all the products we used. We used DIY White Swan, Black Velvet, and the IOD stamps we used the barn wood, the back plates, the knob topper, and the flexi stamper. We used our Paint Pixie one and three quarters and one and a quarter brushes, and then we sprayed on a top coat with Sweet Pickens top coat, but you could also brush that on, use clear wax, or DIY Big Top would work. Because this is a desk, it's gonna get some heavy use, so we went with a liquid sealer so that way it was nice and wipeable. Make sure you stay in tune till the end so you see all the close-ups and the glamour shots. And be sure you're sharing this with your friends for us. When you share this video, it helps us get more views, which makes it so we can make more content. We appreciate every view and every share. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.